first, I would li like to thank you for your condolences as well, because at this stage, we, we don't really know the reasons for the attack, uh, but, but uh, it really goes into the Swedish uh, soul uh, and it's, it's really highly reg regrettable. And of course, our thoughts are, are with uh, the victims and their families. I would like to thank uh, Germany and Mr. Heinze and uh, the Counter Extremism Project, Dr. Schindler, for inviting me to this really timely and uh, important workshop. Uh, CEP has produced a highly relevant and important report on violent right-wing extremism and the movement's transnational connectivity. And I really, really commend the authors for their contributions. It's very, very, the report is very welcome. Sweden has a long history of right-wing extremism and violent right-wing extremism or white power, which was a term we used in the 90s when a wave of violent right-wing extremism swept across Sweden with uh, several horrifying attacks, uh, just to, to mention a few of them. He had a lay, we call him the laser man and he shot immigrants in Uppsala and Stockholm. We had this horrible attack on, on John Horn uh, who was a teenager and beaten and then drowned to death by neo-Nazis. Neo and uh, the Alexander killings uh, of policemen, and they were more or less uh, executed. So uh, probably it's not a surprise that uh, violence promoting right-wing extremism, which is the current term used by the Swedish security service, is actually one out of three violent extremist scenes that the security service monitors from a criminal offense perspective, obviously. And the other two is being violence promoting Islamic extremism, and it's still an elevated threat, and uh, violence promoting left-wing extremism. The Swedish security service has a good knowledge on the right-wing extremist scene going back for decades even though its focus on the movement has changed over time depending on its activities. And assessments on the violent extreme scenes undertaken by the security service are constantly updated and of course used by the government to get a better understanding on the developments. Uh, actually, the annual report on the terrorist threat in Sweden will uh, most probably be released quite soon by the National Center for Terrorist Threat Assessment. And it will be quite interesting to see whether or not there are any notable changes in the violent right-wing extremist scene. Last year's report, though, on the threat assessment uh, highlighted, for example, that the international connections online probably inspired lonely actors to commit terrorist attacks and that the online world strengthened the feeling of an expanding and successful violent right-wing extremism ideology. So the online world is critical to attract followers, and of course you already know this, and spreading violent extremist propaganda. And uh, that's why the Swedish Defense Research Agency was asked by the government to map and analyze violent extremist propaganda in different digital environments. And one of the reports, and it's actually a quite interesting one, shows how the internet troll culture with its sarcasms uh, is utilized by users of radical nationalist digital media, both to manipulate political opponents and important to avoid personal responsibility for hate speech and incitement of violence. And hate speech and conspiracy theories and dehumanization, we all know that as well, are common methods to assign threats to groups and individuals to make them legitimate targets of violence. And since the research agency carries out studies, as you are doing as well within CEP, on various violent extremist ideologies, it's quite interesting to see how they learn from each other because they all play on identities, we and them, 
there is some kind of a coming crisis and then a solution. And uh, these individuals that are active in the virtualized world are polarizing and dehumanizing the perceived enemy. And these loose networks are highly adaptive to the new digital landscape and can adjust quickly. And we see this across the different violent extremist scenes. Prevention is an overall policy for not uh, least a diplomat as myself within the Minister for Foreign Affairs in regard to, to violent extremism. But it's also a key message of our security service. There is a need in addition to detect and avoid criminal activities to stop or at least decrease the inflow of individuals into extremist environments in order to push back their growth. And prevention, and here I mean in terms of awareness raising and knowledge building, requires collaboration between schools, social, social services, the police, civil society, etc. But it also, there's also a need for collaboration on an international level. And I already raised the internet world as, an, as one example of this, but there are many more areas. And uh, Mr. Heinz, Heinz raised this as well. I think, for example, I, I, in the report, uh, the finances are quite interesting for, to study because I haven't found that many reports about uh, financing. However, many of these activities of violent right-wing extremists are carried out on the local level. And in Sweden, there's been a strong demand for guidelines and lessons learned on how to tackle them. And it's coming for, from the municipality level. And to respond to these demands, in 2019, we established a national center for prevention of violent extremism with a task to give support to professionals working at the local level. And we always talk a lot about the local level. So the center gathers representatives from relevant municipalities to exchange experiences and lessons learned on how to deal with violent extremists. Uh, and uh, it is also possible to apply for funding for various projects on preventing violent extremism. And the center does also finance studies on, on VEE. And actually, one of the most recent ones is on violent right wing um, accelerationism from an international perspective. So it's really a value added that the center looks at all forms of violent extremist groups and ideologies because they learn from each other. And then we can draw on one group's experience in developing, for example, exit programs. Uh, very brief, because I think my time is running out. My Finnish colleague just explained. Uh, the ban on the NMR in Finland and I just need to, to, to say that in Sweden we don't have any laws to ban racist organizations but the government has, an, has appointed an all-party committee to consider the introduction of specific criminal liability for participation in racist organization and a ban on racist organizations and the committee will present its proposals in the end of April but since March 2020. We have a ban on cooperating with terrorist organizations. So far, no violent right-wing extremist has been prosecuted and sentenced for terror crime. But, but uh, we will see what happens in the future. Of course, we don't have, we hope that we don't have any terror crimes in the future. But, but anyway, I think um, I will stop there. I really look forward to listen to, to the discussion. And again, I really, really commend CEP and the author for, for such a valuable report that uh, I hope will develop into, into future reports. And uh, thanks again to, to the organizer.